Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to learn how to integrate Firestore with Jetpack Compose. And in order to do so, we will create a very small app. So in this particular app, which you can see on the screen, we are going to create a recipe object and store it in the Firestore. So the recipe object will have three different fields. One is title, the ingredients and the process to create the recipe. So for example, let's say if I give the title as title, the ingredient as ingredients and the process as process, just to give you an example. So if we click on the save button, it will give you a toast and it will display the card showing the whatever the recipes are getting stored. So we will look into how we can create this using Firestore and the Jetpack Compose. So let's get started. First of all, we need to integrate the Firebase. So I'm hoping everyone knows by now how to actually integrate the Firebase. If you don't know how to do so, I will uh, drop a link in the description. You can go through the documentation to connect the Firebase with your Android app. And once you do that, mainly you need to go through some small steps to connect it. And then in the Gradle, you need to add a few dependencies. You will get all these things in the description. So don't worry about this. And once you are able to successfully connect the entire thing, make sure that the manifest is having the permission for the internet. So when everything is up and running, when once you have gone through the, the documentation and connected the Firebase with the with your app, you need to add this specific dependency for the Firestore. So once you do this, the entire connection between the Firestore, the Firebase, and the Android Studio will be ready, and then we can move into actually creating our app. So let me close the emulator. So the first thing we needed to create was the, the data class. So in our case, I, I have named data class as recipe. It's having three different fields, title, ingredients, and process, as I said earlier. And all of these are of string type. And the next thing which we wanted to create was the actual UI. So if you go back to the main activity, if I open up the emulator back. So you can see uh, what I have done is I have created a composable called recipe form. So this is the, the entire form. And uh, there are a few variables which I have defined for, for different purposes. So let me go through these first of all, what each of these are doing. The first is simple to store the context. And these three different variables are used to save the mutable state of the three different fields. That is title, ingredients and process. And the next two are meant for the data and a flag. So this recipes is the variable where which is responsible for updating the recipe list at the bottom, which you can see at the bottom. So this is also a mutable state of recipe, mutable state list of recipe, sorry. All the others are mutable state and this is a mutable state list of recipe because we, we need a list of recipes to be displayed. And then again, a variable to for, let us, for letting us know that when the, the data is getting saved. So once this is get, when this gets triggered, we will actually fetch the recipes and display at the bottom. So initially also, let's say you have already saved five, 10 recipes and you're opening up your app, you need to display those recipes. So for doing so, I have created a function called get recipes, which is inside a recipe service class. So if I open the service class, you can see it's pretty simple. There's just one function and it takes in the recipes, which is of type snapshot state list recipe. I will get back to this. So the what this particular function is doing is basically it's calling the database and we have added a success list on top of it and we are calling this this particular extension function on top of this recipes so if i open this this is basically a small extension function which is uh, very easy to use in case of updating a list so in our case uh, what we are doing here is we are basically clearing the list and adding all the the items in the new list. So we'll add this small extension. If you want, you can do so. If you don't want, it's not necessary to add a extension list. You can directly call these functions on top of a list. So just to make it a bit uh, clean, I have added this uh, extension function. And uh, if we go back to the service class, you can see what we are doing here is we're basically 
updating the ls calling the function and then we are basically calling the it dot two objects and passing the class which is the recipe class so what it is doing is it is converting the list of documents the list of objects which is there in the different documents in the pyres pyres store and it's converting to this particular recipe class so we are getting back the list of recipes as a result by running this line the small code and then we are passing this list inside this extension class and extension function sorry and if i open this you can see it is doing what i told earlier it's clearing the previous list and adding the new the new items inside uh if, yeah if i go back you can see we are calling this function and this is doing exactly as i said it basically uh updating the recipes list so once it gets updated since we have added the mutable state list on top of this so what it will do it will trigger this lazy row in this particular app we are not using a lazy column we are using a lazy row just to or to see how the horizontal scrolling works so we have added a lazy row and we have parted we have passed the items for this as the recipes and each of these item is then passed to a different composable which is responsible for generating this individual cards so if i go to this particular composable you can see it's a card and there is just symbol simply one column the the first is having a text for displaying the title then a space then again a text for ingredients and a space and then the again a text for a pro to display the process and we have added some a small uh, modifier like a padding and shape and elevation so this will happen this will get triggered whenever you open up your app so getting back to the uh, ui for the form we have also done pretty simple stuff we have added a column just below the get recipes uh, we have added a column we have added a small modifier for getting the max width and some padding and then we have added a uh, three different input fields so if i open this so this composable is responsible for generating each of the outline text field which is having a label a modifier and if it is a single line we are get, giving it a max width and if it is not a single line we are giving also providing it a definite a definite height and we are updating the value on based upon the field value and then we are on value change we are equating it to the change value so if i go back again uh, you can see we have created three different fields so one for title one for ingredient one for process we have passed the field value as the title value ingredients value and process value and single line false and false for these two particular fields uh, again we have added a small space which you can see this is the small space i'm talking about then a button button is also pretty simple and uh, upon clicking the button we have created a recipe object and then we are calling the function to perform the saving part so i'm not use any sort of uh, architecture for this this particular example we have just created it as raw as possible with some small clean codes so it is not a, uh, a very clean app is just to give you a basic understanding of how you can connect the file store to the that pack so once we have created the recipe object we are again calling the on uh, complete listener function and we are adding the recipe and if it um, if the task is successful we are showing a toast so show toast is also a function where we are basically passing the context and the message to be shown on the toast so we are showing the toast we are changing the value of this is saved to true and then we are cleaning out the the different fields so as soon as this value is changed to true this uh, this particular condition will be triggered so as you can see if this is true we are again updating the recipes list and upon doing so this day zero will again update so let's say if i add a particular recipe let's say mango shake and keep the ingredients as mango sugar and uh, let's say milk and let's say add mango sugar and milk stir them well and uh, let's just save it so you can you can see you have added the the newly added ingredient 
and you can see it is adding in the in the row fashion not in the column fashion the row fashion so this is how we can simply integrate the fire store to our particular app we can use different architectures we can use npm for this also but the one thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to understand the concept of using the mutable states so main thing you need to understand is that you need to use the mutable states for performing or for updating certain values to a composite it's uh, that is much of the difference with the previous approach when we were using the views and all so in this particular jetpack compose this plays a very huge part the immutable state is a very huge part as of now so that's pretty much it for the integration of the fire store with the android studio so in the upcoming videos you will go through some other services of firebase also like storage and then we will create a full fledged app with the proper architecture so that we can understand how we can create a very clean code very clean app so thank you for watching the entire video and please like and share this video if you find this useful and do subscribe to my channel and, and click on the notification bell so that you can get all my latest videos thank you